the week here to kind of explain what's been going on this past week, kind of update you on IVIG and how that's going, and then kind of chat to you about the appointment that you're going to see. Um, it hasn't happened yet. It's uh, Saturday, July 18th, and I have an appointment on Wednesday, and I'm going to try and record as much as I can about that. Maybe talk about it, probably talk about it afterwards, but... I want to kind of tell you what it's going to be about. Um, so IVIG is going really well. Like I said, it's a bit, been about 10 months since I started. And um, I've been updating you guys in my Instagram. So go follow that. Um, it should be on the screen right here. Um, and links below um, to my Instagram, my medical Instagram, uniquely undiagnosed. Um, biggest update that I've seen and biggest improvement is my swallowing. I have difficulty swallowing and I've had that my whole life. Difficulty... Um, like with aspiration, um, so lots of aspiration, meaning like everything I eat usually goes, part, part of it goes down the wrong tube, down the wrong pipe to, um, my lungs. So that's over the course of 25 years, that's caused scarring or fibrosis is the medical term for it. Um, pulmonary meaning lungs so lung fibrosis. The aspiration is, um, has caused part of that. The other, not all of it, it's not the total cause of my fibrosis. Of the pulmonary fibrosis so it's technically called idiopathic meaning we don't know the reason why um the scarring is so extensive but it is that way partially at least from the aspiration is that the IVIG has helped with that um quite a lot my parents have noticed from an objective point of view that um, my coughing is way way less with liquids and foods um let's see yesterday you saw or only just a couple seconds ago you saw me going to Stanford to get a chest CT that was ordered by my pediatric pulmonologist that I've had for 21 years now, 22 years now. She uh, said I've grown too big for that clinic and I'm really gonna miss her like I said but she has referred me over to the adult side of Stanford so I'm still at Stanford just like my cardiologist, just like my immunologist, my rheumatologist, dermatologist, etc. Endocrinologist I think too, GI and I think that's it, there's a lot. But anyway, now add pulmonology. So at least everything will be in one spot. So I'm gonna get um, some testing done on the day that I see him that he's just naturally orders anyway for his new patients and maybe every time I go there I'll get them. But anyway, at least he's been he's ordered some so I don't have to worry about that, but she ordered a chest CT. Anyway, just like a three month or a four month checkup um, that she wanted, I don't know what test He'll start to order as I become a regular for him, or even how regular I will see him. He's totally different. I know that my friend Kayla, um, a fight to breathe, we're on Instagram, and um, she had him as a doctor at Stanford um, when she lived in San Francisco, and that's how we met. We met through the mutual, um, you know, geographic locations of being in the Bay Area and also going to Stanford, and then. When I told her, when I texted her the other day and I said I was, you know, moving over to the adult side, I said, do you happen to know any of the doctors that I'm going to go see? This is his name, Dr. Mooney. Um, she said, yeah, that was my doctor and he's great and he really listens and so he's really attentive and really, you know, good at coordinating people and I'm like, oh, that's awesome because, you know, I have a bunch of moving parts, like I have a bunch of doctors and a bunch of specialists, so it's great that he can, you know, work with everybody. That's awesome to know. The nature of my disorder is very like outside and inside, but very much outside as well, meaning restrictive. My disorder is a restrictive lung disease, so it's the rib cage that keeps me from in, from being able to take a big exhale and stuff and get all the air in um, combined with the fibrosis, so it's both. The, another thing to note um, is that um, at my pediatric clinic, we've been doing it, we've, doing, we've been doing my height based on the um, based on my ulna, which is your elbow to your wrist, that's another way to measure your true height because the way um, I stand is very, very bent um, at my hips and also as I've gotten older I've also been like uh, more forward in my back as well. But part of my disorder, for whatever known reason, um, I was growth hormone deficient and so I never grew to my true height. We don't even know what my true height is, but because um, Genetically, my family is really tall. Um, I got really long limbs. Um, I have kind of long legs. I've got size 8 feet. 
um, compared to someone who's like truly born for 10 or for 11. They're tiny, their proportions are tiny. I've got really long limbs because um, I was probably supposed to be um, taller. What I'm getting at is by doing this measurement of measuring your um, ulna um, to be your true height, you can measure how tall you're really supposed to be. Is in the recent years, we've done this measurement because I'm actually meant to be 5'2", based on the size of my ulna or the length of my ulna. So we actually compare it to someone, um, you know, because I can't stand as tall, etc. And all the reasons I just listed, um, they actually compare my pulmonary function testing numbers, um, the liters that I can blow out, um, to the liters of some of a female that's 25 and it's actually 5'2 rather than 4'11 or 4'10. Um, so that actually brings my numbers a little lower. Um, my percentage is really lower. I shouldn't say the amount, the liters I blow out is the same. That's going to be the same no matter what. But when you do the percentage of what I'm supposed to be of someone who that has all my same proportions um, with all those things I just said, I am at 23% of what I should be. So um, I have been able to hold my stats pretty well. The only new change in the past couple of years has been an altitude, definitely need it in altitude. Um, so in Colorado and Denver, where I just was a couple months ago, and uh, flying. So definitely those two, I know for a fact. That's been the week, and that's gonna be, this is what's gonna happen in the next couple of days. So um, I will let you know how it goes, and I will, take you along. So hopefully this was interesting to you and you stick around for the rest of the video about how my new pulmonary clinic goes at the adult side of Stanford. All right, I'll see you guys soon. to my um, new appointment, my first ever adult pulmonary clinic, and it went really, really well. I did my PFTs first and then the six minute walk. I had to reintroduce the concept that my um, pediatric pulmonologist introduced, which was using my ulna um, length as my true height instead of how tall I am and that made a big difference in the numbers. Um, the leaders that I blew out were actually a little bit better than last time, in only in June, but not by a lot, about the same, about stable, if not just a little t a little bit better. So that's really good. Um, I went from, I think, um, 0.75 liters to 0.8, so 0 0.80, so that's really good. Um, I'm, I'm about the same, if not a little bit better. I talked to the doctor and he's really nice, he's really personable, um, he is really attentive just like Kayla said. And the main thing that I walked away with from that appointment was he's just gonna keep a really good eye on me and he's gonna have me come back in three months for a little while um, until he gets a baseline. Um, he acknowledges that a lot of the problems for my restrictive breathing and difficulty breathing and restrictive lung disease um, is partially due to the fibrosis and the scarring in my lungs that I talked about um, before in this video, but he sees that a lot of the scarring has, if not all the scarring, has been um, stable for the past three years on all the CTs that I've gotten in images, so that's really promising that I have not gotten any new unknown scarring since then. They've been stable for three years and yet in the past three years obviously my numbers have gone down quite a bit from 46% in February of 2016 to 36% in I think January of 2017 and then 30% in about June or July of 2017. What are we 2020? So now I'm at a stable 23%, so that's another 7% in a couple years. 
my because my images have um, not changed in three years or more um, in about three or four years then that means there's got to be something wrong with the outside my torso and my ribcage surrounding my lungs have m must have gotten um, tighter and more stiff for whatever reason we still don't know obviously why but that's going to be another explanation if you can't see it on imaging um, if my lungs haven't gotten any more scarred then that's probably the reason so the fact that I'm on Zeldrans right now is what is trying to slow that progression of stiffening and tightening not only in my joints and you know helping with joint pain and muscle pain the hope is also that it will slow down the progression of tightening and, and restriction and maybe even loosen things and so we shall see in about three months if my lung function can at least stay stable or if not better and then obviously as the rheumatology dermatology side I would let them know if I saw any clinical differences in um, pain and even ability to do more I'm not active as much obviously but we are getting a treadmill and that's coming in a month from today so I'm really really excited that we're getting a treadmill for the house and I just got my standing frame which will get me taller and straighter so the upshot of the appointment and to round it out is he's going to keep up the frequent monitoring of appointments every three months we are not out of options if lung function is not stable or goes down of course we don't know if my disease is autoimmune so if the Zeljans does work then that would be an indication that I do have an autoimmune disorder or some autoimmune disorder like disease and I'm just glad that appointment was over and done with and I can begin to build that relationship and trust with him like I had with my pediatric pulmonologist for 20 plus years. Um, he seemed really caring and kind and supportive and reassuring. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are excited to come along on this journey of continuing to monitor my lung disease, um, every other aspect of my unknown undiagnosed connective tissue disorder. Please ask me anything you like. I am um, a mystery. I'm complex. I'm unknown. So if you have any questions, just let me know down below. Um, the more traction we get down there, possibly more people will see this video and maybe anybody that has a, di has a disorder kind of like mine might see this video. That would be great. Share it wherever you can on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram stories, wherever you like. Um, get this out there if you could please. Uh, more people to see it, the better. So go down below, hit subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for whenever I post a new video. If you're watching it um, sometime in the future when both videos are out, there should be a card somewhere up in one of the corners um, that will lead you to the next video, which is a review on the Making Moths palette and the full beat sponges, both from ColourPop. So stay tuned for more videos on makeup reviews, skincare reviews, coming soon. And I really look forward to talking with you guys in the comments. Hope you guys are well, take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.